Yeah. yeah. How much? How many have been there, and that hope just goes? Mm -hmm. And it's like, all right. I mean, it's been this way for so long. There's just no. This is it. I'm losing everything. Mm -hmm. You get that Joe mindset. Mm -hmm. I'm probably going down in ashes. Mm -hmm. And it beats you so bad to where you can barely function. Mm -hmm. You know, in front of everyone, you're smiling, but once you get alone, you're sobbing. Mm -hmm. Depression hits. Anxiety hits. You don't even know what to do. So is that my job? I deliver pizza. I have the luxury of actually leaving every like 10 minutes in my car. I like to jam out to music. I like to drive fast. And um, <laughs> <laughs> but this day, <laughs> I, I was just losing it. Really losing it in my car. Floods of life come every which area. I mean health. I mean money. I mean, it just really beats you down. You know, we've all been there. And I remember sobbing and crying and praying, felt like the Lord didn't hear me. Now we can all really, really, right? <laughs> and so the fire of God hit me. So what on earth are you crying about? Mm. I was like, well, man, I'm on a long delivery. I got a long list and you got time. So I'm crying about this, 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 this. I heard stop, 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 stop. Here's an idea, Ryan. I'm like, okay, and this is just the, the spirit of God hit my car. Stop crying. He's like, Ooh. why don't you go out and sock it to the devil? No. He's hitting you? You're going to hit back or you're going to let him bully you? I'm like, you know what? You're right. I'm dying anyway. I ain't going out like this. This guy's losing. <laughs> <laughs> or, I, you know, we've all been there. Was I going to lose it all? Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Did I feel like, yeah. We've all felt like we were going down, but did we? No. no. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Every delivery after that, I, I get to the house, wipe my tears, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I go and be like, the Lord loves you. Peek in their house, you have a kid. You know the Bible says children are a gift from God. I mean, the Lord loves you, your wife. This one guy actually, living into the ghettos of Millville. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and um, I'm just telling him, you know, the Lord loves you, dude. He loves your wife. He loves your kid. You're going to be blessed. And um, here's your bill. <laughs> um, I'll never forget it. It was 20. No. Yeah. It was. Don't tease me. It was 25 and change. Okay? He hands me two 20s. Simple math, change 25 bucks. Right? He's like, dude, give me my change. I'm like, dude, here's a 20. So now I, I like, you know, paid for his food, at least like by half, right? And he's like, Dude, I was like, no, I want to bless you. Like, if you're not going to accept the gospel, okay, I'm going to bless you anyway. So he hands me 20 back. He's like, no, man, just give me my proper change. I'm like, I will not leave your house <laughs> until you take the 20. He's like, fine. And so that was that. Not every story ends good. He was a little bad. I didn't care. I was losing everything, remember? Um, so the same thing happened every delivery I'm telling every customer you know the Lord loves you the Lord loves you the Lord loves you I get back to the store uh, I walk in pizza store I'm all happy looking right very depressed uh, everyone knows I'm a believer at my work by the way I'm, you, I'm not ashamed I know you're not ashamed so stop acting ashamed I know that I'm not talking to a bunch of unbelievers okay tell you how to get blessed there's hope in this I promise so I walk back into the store. Now there's two men at the counter. They are saying some real vulgar things about a counter girl. Okay, you know, that's, wow. if you have any moral value, if you have any morals, that's aggravating. They're saying horrible things about my sister. Now we're mad. I'm not mad. I'm losing everything. I'm going out <laughs> for the Lord. So they're both back there, mad, shaking. And I'm like, what's going on? They're like, dude, they're like saying all this gross stuff. I'm not going to repeat behind the pulpit. So I'm like, oh, who? And they're like, damn. So I walk right over there. Now I'm not skipping a beat. I'm like, hey, guys. They're like, why? And I'm like, what's up? They're like, nothing. I'm like, do you order food? They're like, yeah. So the conversation goes on. They tell me what to order. I want to play a game. I'm like, they order three things. So I'm like, guys, let's play a game. They're like, okay. So now they're curious, right? They're actually laughing the whole time. They actually never stop. And I'm like, pick an arm between one and, th between one and three. Without skipping a B, he says three. Like, I'm going to pay for this for you. He's like, why? Because Jesus told me to bless you. Now we're really laughing. Now, you know, my coworkers are looking at me funny. And now the other customers are like, and I'm still like, I'm paying for it. He's like, I don't want you to. I don't care. 
I'm behind the counter. I have the register. I know how much a bill is. You can't really stop me. He's like, yeah, I can. I'm like, why? He's like, because I already paid. Oh, I was like... <laughs> it was like 10 bucks, right? I'm like, I got to figure out how to get this guy to take $10. He never took it. I tried. And he's like, man, what's up with you? As I'm trying. I'm like, Jesus loves you. And he loves me. And what you're doing is because you think you're in love. He goes, man, dude, no one loves me. All right? He's high, by the way. And now he's teary eyes. He's like, nobody loves me. I'm like, that's a lie from hell, dude. Jesus loves you and I love you. Take the 10 bucks. And end of the story is he didn't take it, but he liked me. And he didn't get saved either. <laughs> it doesn't always end good. Uh -huh. But a testimony came from it. Remember I told you in this little testimony, uh, the first house I went to, I for I literally, I'm not, I forced the 20 on the guy because I don't care. I'm just going to bless someone. Um, I actually, the way the Lord worked out is I went there again the next day. And now I'm really happy. Because, like earlier, there's always hope the next time. <laughs> so I get there, I knock on the door, and his complexion's changed. He's pretty happy. And, um, you know, he has to go. I give him this bill. He's going to get the money. He comes out to me, and his wife looks way happier, too. He's like, man, yesterday, did you do that because you didn't have change? No, I had plenty of change. I just wanted to bless you. He's like, dude, that's crazy. He goes, I told everyone at work about you today. Like, that blessed me. I'm like, oh, dude, that's awesome. I love you. He's like, love you too. God bless. I guess things do end pretty good, right? The moral of this testimony is in what I think to date would be the darkest time of my life. Um, just kind of stomping it to the devil, despite my feelings. I definitely didn't feel like doing it, but I made up my mind. I'm not going to be bullied by anyone, especially the devil. After literally socking into him with every other delivery, which is about 10 people, in the midst of my pain, I laughed. In the, midst, in the midst of my troubles, I felt the joy of the Lord. So many, so many Christians are so hopeless feeling, but you are not hopeless. There is hope. We have the blessed hope, Jesus Christ, and it doesn't end there. It's not some religious statement. It's like, oh, Jesus came, you have hope, good luck. No, dude, he sent his spirit to change you completely around. He came to flip your world right side up and give you a new heart. You know, we pray, oh, you know, Lord, come into my heart. And like, fix it. And it's fantastic. The meaning is great. But you know what really happens is the Bible says the Lord rips out that stony heart and gives you a new one. Amen. Your thinking's different. Your heartbeats are different. Your emotions are different. Everything's different. In the midst of adversity, you will stand the trial. Because you're saved and God's not going to let you go. You can go. God's not going to let you go. He'll follow you. I love running into backsliders. I just pray, Lord, just sick them. Hit them in their car. Don't let them go. Tell them how much you love them. Yes. I'm telling you the truth, man. And I'll tell you what. Like, you have such a hope in you. Such a hope. So this depression that you're battling isn't of God. And it doesn't belong to you. You're not allowed to listen to it. Just stop that. Like, stop that, man. We claim that we have this blessed hope. And we wonder why no one wants it. Because when we tell them, oh, I got hope... I just want to witness to you today. I won't want that either, and I didn't my whole life. I didn't want it. I didn't want to hear that. But when someone came to me and prophesied me in the name of Jesus, he said, Ryan, you got this, this, that going on with you. Do you want salvation today? I was like, mm, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, God will use you like that. And you will find that there is just hope and salvation in your advancement of the kingdom. And you will stand trials. You will stand. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, this isn't religion. Everyone who is not filled with the Holy Ghost, every religious spirit, every criticizing spirit will totally be angry. And they will laugh and they will mock at this. But for those of you, and I believe it's all of us, I like to think that, but I'll never take it for granted, are filled with the Holy Ghost. So you know what you mean, what I mean, I hope. If you don't, you can know. All right? So literally, you will stand. And I just want to tell you this. I was actually talking to someone about this, and there's this prophecy going around that at the death of Billy Graham, you're going to see a generation rise who is tried severely, who has suffered much, who have stood in the face of adversity, perversion, wickedness, and all evils, and have stood trial. Great. I don't know what the death of Billy Graham has to do about that. I know biblically I will never speak out about anything. You know, if I don't maybe see the whole truth, or maybe I don't personally agree, I will never slander anyone. But... The, you know, the whole body of that is true. God is raising up a generation who is going to be so severely tried, it's going to seem unfair. 
I'm talking like lost, like right out of high school. I'm talking like just some crazy, crazy things, and they are going to stand in the midst and say, I am not ashamed. What y'all are going through is crazy. You shouldn't be feeling like this. Get saved. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if Paul walked in here? I'd be sitting right there. He'd be like, a lot of you need to get saved, especially that kid. <laughs> He'd be like, I need to get saved again, Paul, you know what I mean? But like, rise up, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Stop letting the devil kick you in the teeth. Amen. We prayed for so long. God, why won't you give me a God? Why won't you do this? God, why won't you? I tell you the truth. I'm going to leave you with a fate you can't ignore. That the Lord did it 2,000 years ago when he said, My disciples, my disciples have authority over all the works of the devil. To stomp his head in the ground, to kick him in the teeth. You will be poisoned, or he will try and poison you. It won't happen. Sickness will not stop you. You will see the dead raised. You will heal the sick, and you will prophesy in my name. You're going to stop the kingdom of hell. Amen. He said that to my disciples. Who is a disciple of Jesus today? Amen. Show me. I want to see the disciples. Yeah. If you're not a disciple, you got no hope. You need to be a disciple. Amen. Without Jesus Christ, you are hopeless. But with him, you have all the, you have the blessed hope, man. Amen. This isn't for the world. You know what's for the world? The invitation of Jesus Christ. They don't get these blessings. They don't get Amen. this. They don't get this hope until they repent of their sin and they come to Jesus. Amen. We have it. We've had it for so long. It's time to use it. God's saying, man, 2,000 years ago, I took care of it. You want to know why it's still here? Because you don't believe. It's like you're a prisoner in a prison. Someone came and opened the cell door and said, you're free. And you look at him and say, I don't believe that door's open. And so you sit there in that cot. And you're moping. And you're crying. The door's open. You can see it clear as day. But because you just don't believe for some awkward reason, that'd be weird. That's weird. Right? That's dumb. The door's open. How more dumb should it be that we have been set free by the truth, filled with the Holy Ghost, and we still worry? Amen? Amen? I'm running out of time. I'd love to go more. Um, but hey, why not, right? Again, if you're a disciple of Jesus Christ, man, you better get one with that Holy Ghost and you better just stomp out that devil real quick. And it don't take long either. But if you're not, I would like you, to, I'd like to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as your Savior. Amen. I love to see the best in everyone. I like to believe everyone's saved, but wisdom says don't ever take that for granted. So would everyone stand up? I like to be just really upfront about it. I, I'm not sorry. <laughs> now with your heads bowed and your eyes closed, if you've known the Lord and you've fallen away and you're suffering and what I have said has spoken true to you and you would like to receive, you know, you'd like to come back to Christ and make a fresh start, this is for you. If you've never known the Lord and you would like to because you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, you... The Lord has opened your eyes and you realize it's Satan all along and there really is a simple fix to all this and you want the Lord, this is for you too. I'm going to pray a prayer. Just repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, come Jesus, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I know, I know that Jesus died and you rose him. He paid for my sin on that cross. He paid for my victory in you. And so, Father, I give my life to you. I repent of my sin. And I choose now to live for you and to stomp the devil in the teeth until I die. Father, fill me with your spirit. Forgive my sins and use me. And I thank you for what's coming ahead. And the blessings that are on the way. And the blessings that are on the way. I love you. I love you. Amen. 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 Praise the mighty minute. Amen. All right. Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.